I'd like to demonstrate for you how to paint with the watercolor on the Batiko paper. Um, here is my drawing and I sketched it out on top of the wax paper. You can hear it kind of ripping apart. And then here is the Batiko paper. When you take this batik, the wax paper off of the Batiko paper, it looks like nothing happened. Um, but if you hold it just right in the light, you can see the waxy lines sort of on there. So the motto for the, for the day is, guess what? It's okay to color outside the lines. And I see my barn right there. So I'm gonna start with a red color. And I'm mixing, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Here is the paint palette. Here is, or sorry, the paint tray with the colors. And here is the palette where I'm going to be mixing the colors. Get a fresh spot. And I've got a cup of water with a paintbrush. I've also got a paper towel close by. I'm gonna try to do this in less than 10 minutes. So here's where my barn is. I want it to be a red barn. So I'm gonna um, moisten the red paint right here. Kind of twirl my brush in it without, don't push too hard. You don't wanna tear up that paint. Just kind of twirl your brush in it and then you roll it over here in the palette so that it comes off of the brush. I'm gonna get a sploosh of water. And there's my red. Don't paint directly out of the tray of colors because that stuff is too thick and it comes out too waxy and doesn't look so good. So I'm just trying to search. There is my red barn. When I see a white line, I know that I need to stop. Try not to go outside of the lines. There it is. And then there's a side right here. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for the barn for now. I wanna let that dry and I'll come back in just a little while and add um, some more strokes and some more details. That's it. If I go outside the lines, guess what? It's okay. Remember, that's the motto for the day. It's okay to paint outside the lines. Your first grade our kindergarten teacher is probably freaking out as I say that. All right, if you go outside the lines and you didn't really want to, you can wet it up just a little bit and dab it dry. There we go. All right, I'll come back and add some more detail to that later. All right, I wanna make um, a tin roof, so that's kind of a black color mixed with um, water to make a gray. Let's make it a little bit darker. There it is. There, I went outside the lines again. That's okay. All right. So I want a blue sky. So I need to make just some pure blue. It's gonna be a cloudy day in my picture. So I'm gonna leave lots of uh, white areas as I paint this, and I'm gonna paint really quick and really dirty. So I'm just quickly brushing my paintbrush across there. Um, if you know anything about clouds, I'm gonna make cirrus clouds. C-I-R-R-U-S, cirrus. Those are the kind of stretched out, sweepy clouds. Not the puffy ones. Puffy ones are called cumulus. All right. Get a little more water to spread it out. Okay, another line just popped up, so I know that's where my tree line is that I wanted. So I don't want to go too much past that. Strokes going horizontal across the page because that's the shape of my clouds. Find my horizon line over here. All right, there it is. I've got a line of trees in the background against the horizon line. Um, I don't want straight up green. I want it to be a toned down green. So here's some green. The green, just a little more neutral. I'm getting some red on my paintbrush. And that almost makes my green a brown. All right, so that was a, maybe a little too neutral. I'll go ahead and brush it down though. There we go. And it's okay to go outside the lines. All right, now I'm gonna use, let's try some of that green. Just 
just letting it kind of blend on the page. And add some more green to my palette right there. I know I drew where the hay has been cut here in the front and then there's a couple of hay bales in here and then there's areas where the hay has not been cut. So I need to make a kind of a golden yellow color for the hay. Where it's been cut it's going to be a little bit darker so I'm going to start with this brown that I already had mixed up and get a little swipe of yellow. Alright that's too bright. Get some more brown. There we go. There's a hay bale. Things that are closer to you are lighter. Things that are closer to you are darker, and things that are further away are lighter. So I'm gonna use some more of the dark brown here toward the front. All right, now I wanna start making it look like it's been cut in rows. So these brush strokes show up pretty well on this Batiko paper. All right, I'll come back and touch that up some more. I'm just trying to get the basic colors down. My um, hay bales aren't showing up too well, so I'll probably just try to make them, make them disappear. Now I want more of a golden yellow for the top of the hay to be cut. So I added more yellow to it. Oh, look, there's a fence. Oh, no, I'm out of yellow. So I'll just use a little water to help move it around. All right, time to lighten up back here. Because things off in the distance are lighter. So I can use, um, I put some water on top of that color, and then I'm going to use my paper towel to help lift. And this paper towel has a texture to it, and it kind of gave a texture back there to that area, and I like it. All right, now I'm going to start adding some texture right here. So I've given it a little bit of time to dry, and I'm just sweeping my hand upward. Like that's the edge of the hay that has not been cut yet. And it gets smaller as it goes off into the distance. Size variation. Kind of do the same thing over here on this side. It's part of linear perspective. And then the hay on top is kind of bushy, too much, too much. A little bit darker. And textury. Let's add the texture in. We can see more texture and details in the areas that are closer to us. And then we see less, less of that as it goes off into the distance. Just kind of letting my paintbrush dance across the page. Put a line for our tractor kid to get in and out of the barn right there. Why there's a barn right there, I don't know. Why not? All right. Let's bring this path out as a darker brown because it's dirt. It's kind of smooth back there. Soften that edge up. There's my hay. All right, we can also use a toothbrush. A toothbrush makes a good tool. Just kind of tap a little bit of color on the bristles and then take your finger your thumbnail and run your fingernail across the top of that and it just adds a little texture. I need to work on that barn real fast and then I'm gonna call this painting done. Just get a little extra bit right there and I'm gonna bring vertical lines. Draw a little shadow. All right, now I want, I want to change the inside. 
of the hayloft. See if I can lift some of that color out. I'm just putting some clean, fresh water on there and then dry my brush out really good up to a point. And touch over it and it sucks that color up. Put a little touch of black in there to make that gray. And then some of that hay color, like there's hay sitting up in the loft. And that's it.